Hey guys, today I'm going to be telling you how I got a grade 9 in GCSE Chemistry. Now this video is going to be kind of the same as my biology one, but more specific to chemistry. If you're doing combined science, you can still use this video. It's going to be really useful for how you can revise chemistry. But I personally did triple science, so it'll be more specific into chemistry itself. So the first thing you want to do, like in all my videos, I say, you want to get the guide. Make sure you get the right exam board. GCSE chemistry, make sure if you're doing triple science, you get the triple one, so chemistry. If you're doing combined science, get the combined one. Yeah, and if you need more practice, you can also get these, which are the flashcards you can use. If you walk to school, that's super useful. You just take them out and there's questions at the front and you uh, flip it over at the back. You can see on the front here, there's an idea of what it is at the front. But yeah, make sure it's your right spec. That's for AQA. Oh lol, <laughs> I've got two, <laughs> two of the same one. I think, yeah, I might love the CGP books a bit too much. Just like all of the subjects, um, I would definitely get a folder or a pocket, what are these called? Pocket wallets, where you can store them and label it paper one and paper two. You can put all of your stuff inside. I have a lot of notes, lots of things per topic. So this is like C9. And I've got um, notes on perhaps the vocabulary that I need to know some ones on the two types of cracking, summary notes. You don't have to do that, but if it helps your understanding, I would. Now for chemistry and physics in particular, there should be more emphasis on past paper questions because there's only a set number of things that they can ask you and they, they do come up year to year. Same type of questions, different contexts. Also the questions you get will be based around the context. Like I remember in my year, I had to compare vegan burgers and beef burgers back when veganism was a big thing. You need to do past papers in an effective way. So how do you do that? Firstly, I if you're in year 10, I would not touch past papers just yet. Wait, let me explain because you guys all come at me when I say that. So in year 10, more emphasis should be put on learning the content, like actually understanding what you need to know. Maybe make summary notes for each topic. You have time to do that in year 10, so feel free to do that. In year 11, you have mocks. And the way to prepare for those mocks is not really by doing past paper questions, not just yet. You learn all of the content, you make sure you know the content back to front. You make flashcards and stuff and you do it based on that. You make the flashcards from the specification and then you sit those questions in your mocks and they, your teachers will use past, past paper questions. But the thing is, if you revise from past paper questions, you're gonna see the questions that you've already done before and it doesn't really help you because one thing that I found in my GCSEs, especially for the sciences, was that some of the questions, I was like, oh no, I don't know what to do because this is the first time I haven't seen the questions. For example, physics, we did past paper questions a bit too early, I think. So I was like, oh no, I don't think I'm actually gonna do well because I don't have the reliability that I had before, where I'd seen that question before and I knew the answer. And so I got a lot more scared and a bit more spooked by it. I would recommend only doing past papers after your last set of mocks. And to do past papers effectively, I would get a folder, print out all of the past papers one-sided. It's a lot of paper. You sit down one night and you just organize them by topic or you can just use PMTs, questions by topic, but I found it more reliable doing it myself. Use dividers to um, break it into topics. You can see I labeled it based on the specification. So I have 4.1.2, the periodic table. And then if I flick through, it's all of the questions on the periodic table. And you can see I've circled some of them, like at the top here. And I would circle it in pencil if I got it wrong or if I didn't answer it to the standard I wanted to answer it to. So then I would go back and look at all the ones I circled and do them again. I would write my answers on a separate piece of paper because I wanted to reuse this. So this is just kind of my question paper and I'll get some scrap paper and write out the answers on that. Or I'll just verbally say them and then check the mark scheme and I made the mark scheme on my laptop. As I was going through these, I put the year of the paper it was at the bottom like June 2018 or 2019 and then I would go through and it's quite long but you you see what page what order you did them in on organizing it here and then you copy and paste the mark scheme into a separate word document in that order it's easy from then because you've done all the hard work all the admin work of sorting and organizing it 
But yeah, this is the most effective way that I found for um, past paper questions. Also, you see all of the questions by topic. That means that you know whatever is going to come up, like all the possible different spins they can put on the question. You've looked at it in different contexts and um, it's great to do it by topic. So doing past papers is like a good chunk of your revision, but another chunk is making flashcards and doing those flashcards um, and doing them based off the spec. You can even put past paper questions into your flashcards. So if there's a question you keep getting wrong and like it's a six marker or, or you need to memorize the answer to it or it's a simple answer, there's a specific word that you need to know uh, to get the mark, then you write the question now in on a flashcard and then write the answer and like underline it and put it in bold and put it in Anki or whatever flashcard um, thing you use. I would do that. I would make summaries as well if you want to for each individual topic. You don't have to. I think those are my main tips for GCSE chemistry. A lot of it's going to be the same for the other sciences. Between the sciences are going to be slightly different because you can do specific things for different sciences. So if you want to check out my other videos, feel free. If you found this useful, please do like and subscribe. It really helps me out. I hope to see you soon in the next video. See ya!